Okay, so next up we've got Renee. Uh, Renee is a senior researcher at the Nuremberg Institute for Market Decisions. Um, he's got a huge uh, past using technology um, from networking to robotics. Um, he actually makes the, the best, in my opinion, the best note-taking app. Uh, it's like a little plugin for NeoVim. I've never been able to use a note-taking app for longer than like two days because uh, I get just like really uh, over-focused on trying to like index the information and be like, oh, I have a new topic I'm writing about. How do I, uh, you know, categorize everything anew so that it fits within this new data model? And instead, he made this awesome uh, plugin. It's like you press a button, you name uh, your new notes page, and then you throw it away, and then if you need it, you just do like some fuzzy finding. It's great, I fucking love it. Um, so Renee's uh, been doing Zig for a while, and the last sickle, he actually gave a talk on, uh, he, he, he gave a presentation of his presentation software that he wrote from scratch uh, that ran at uh, 15,000 frames per second. Um, we just did a test, and this runs at only uh, a, a very slow 750 frames per second. So you know you're getting good shit. <laughs> so anyone, uh, everyone, uh, Renee. Thank you. So this is the real stuff now. This is why I took my time. But um, since this is the final talk, it's the only thing that separates us from dinner. So <laughs> we'll sap through it blazingly fast. Um, after we have gained the focus again, I guess. Yes. So first things first um, about myself. So I've been programming for quite some time now, like 35 years, nonstop, not a single break. And now I've worked as a, so I've, I've been in the telecoms industry and, and, and transitioned into the uh, medtech and uh, did embedded stuff and research and now I work as a researcher, but I actually identify more as, as an engineer. And as Matt said, I'm, I'm doing human machine interaction, AI, robotics, electronics, the whole stuff. It just depends on the current research project. And um, thanks to SAP, I can now program like almost full-time in SIG. There's still an awful lot of Python though, but um, I'm also getting rid of Dart and Flutter, um, converting our front-end to JavaScript, but more on that later. Um, other SIG projects of mine, slides is like this, what you see here. I've also written some command line SIG for, for some GPT kind of stuff and but as Matt noticed, the software that's loved the most is actually a NeoVim plugin written in Lua. So maybe I can change that at some stage and it will be a SIG project. Anyway, enough about myself. What am I, am I going to talk about? Well, SAP, which is a micro framework for web applications in SIG. And my intention was to have a framework that is fast, robust, and minimal, like subjectively, and I'm also uh, going to talk about some benefits of uh, using SIG in an open source project and a very obvious strategy for getting SIG to use at work. So, but I can hear some of you saying, hey, come on, I work at Fangy Bang Mega Corporation, <laughs> and um, I only know web scale, what you're talking about, or I only ever use mega frameworks, not micro frameworks. Yeah. Uh, so, what are we talking about here? Yes. <laughs> um, so my subjective definition or a list of, of, of features of a micro framework is it's used in like smallish, which means, uh, where I mean not overly complex applications. There should be no bloat in there. They um, service thousands of clients concurrently in just one process. Like I use it for REST APIs. And, and stuff. Oh yeah, um, an important one, APIs with a custom, maybe even an in-memory data store. So nothing super complex and bloated. So when we contrast that with uh, full stack frameworks, 
they usually have built-in support for accounts, roles, and stuff like that, have an admin interface, some DB abstraction, ORM, input validation, templating engine, and some, some bloat is expected, but that's okay. So going back to my use cases, um, in our research projects, I need some REST-like API servers for large online research experiments. I'll show a bit of that later. Um, in our field, which is yeah, the not very widespread field of market decisions research, uh, normal questionnaires and standard survey tools are, are very common. But come on, we are cool. And so we want to create cool online experiments with complex user interactions and new technologies. And uh, so that we can watch people making decisions, like in realistic scenarios. So that's just about our research. And um, yeah, I also need a WebSocket server to reintroduce multiplayer mode into my slideshow program. So with online experiments, this is basically what we do. Um, here we can see some social robot that's confronting the, the potential uh, customer. Um, we also built like uh, an Alexa with an emotional tone. And instead of the robot, we also have a human version and a real robot version and everything. It's just to give you an idea. Um, and usually we have about 5,000 plus uh, participants. And it's, it's like a thousand of them come online as soon as you publish um, the online experiment. So, what have I done before? Python, Flask, MongoDB, which was awesome because in research, Python is very common. It's super easy to get started with, this whole stack. Uh, it's super flexible, everything is dynamic, and it's like kind of robust. There is the odd exception that can hit at any time, but you know, it's just research anyway. Um, performance, hmm. uh, some, some Python keyword just I don't know. Uh, yeah, there is, it's, it's not really great in terms of performance, though. And so maybe we could use SIG because we know SIG is robust and we know it's, it's fast, like it can do 16,000 FPS, sometimes only 700, but who cares? It's much faster <laughs> than Python. And when you compare the two, the performance usually achieved in, in such uh, Python web um, stuff is, is done through parallel processes. Um, and in SIG, we could achieve basically the same thing by not wasting CPU cycles. But wait, there's more. If we don't have um, inter-process communication because we don't have parallel processes, we can keep our data in one process, and so we don't even need a database anymore, which makes it even faster, possibly. So that was in January um, this year, I, was, I, I had enough of this Python stuff and thought, let's do it in SIG. And then I, I googled around and found some, some SIG projects. I even contemplated, uh, even contemplated stealing Bun's uh, HTTP server, but um, looking at the code, I thought maybe that's not such a good idea because I didn't really understand it. Not, yeah. I won't say anything more. Um, then there was the other option that you often read is like, hey, come on, write the server in Go, write your request handlers in SIG, and then use the C foreign function interface to, to integrate. But what's wrong with that approach? You turn the whole project into a Go project. No. <laughs> Wrap an existing C library. Yes, that's what I did. And so um, I found some really awesome um, project that's called facil.io. I'm not sure if I uh, pronounce it correctly. It's a C framework. It's an evented high performance network library. Um, it powers the Ruby iodine, HTTP, and web WebSocket server. It speaks HTTP 1.1. It has a dynamic type system in C, but a good one. For example, strings are not zero terminated. They have a length field, which makes them ideal um, for uh, passing around uh, six slices. So I started with this in, in January 2023, like this year. And um, 
The project gained some traction. I don't know why. Um, it's just my HTTP server, but maybe uh, other people find it useful too. So this brings us to the kind of slogan, absorb it with SIG. What, what do I mean by that? So I hope you can read that, but if you can't read it, it's just some C code that doesn't look too SIG-like. And um, the Facil I.O. library is, is pretty awesome, but we don't want to, want to write C code, so we wrap it in SIG and build upon it. So we basically absorb it. And that brings me to the strategy we do not love, embrace, extend, extinguish. I think we all know it. We can do better. We can revive, maintain, and absorb it with SIG, which is what I did with Facil I.O., because it's, <laughs> I think, um, yeah, it's, it's just been revived. It's, it, it's not a very active project anymore. But HTTP 1.1 doesn't develop any further, so I'm fine with that. But is it fast? Yes. How fast? <laughs> Warning, I have to read this to you. <laughs> what you are about to see can be disturbing for parts of the audience. Language benchmarks, benchmarks ahead, you know what to do. Why? Um, let's first start with how, how I conducted the tests. So in my eyes, it's fast enough. It's compar comparably fast. Um, but what I tested here was just a simple static HTTP server that always replies with 17 bytes constant. You can see the, the, the uh, WRK command here. I tested it on localhost, on Linux. And basically, hang on, let's try the laser pointer. Yeah. I started my tests just with, I wanted to compare like the new stuff with the old stuff that I did and go just to get an indication for what would be normal, what would be, what, what did I want to see? And I concluded, good, we are a bit faster than Go, fine, perfect. But then I got tempted and did a Rust implementation in by the book Rust. And then stuff hit the fan, because you cannot publish, like on your GitHub, this number with Rust. <laughs> It's like a panic situation in SIG. And so thanks to some, uh, some contributor, he pointed me to, to this, uh, this project and also some better Python project. Um, and now we have a better comparison. Um, but I want, to, I want to state that these are the results that I get on my machine on localhost. Your mileage or performance may vary. So what can SAP do? Well, it's a simple HTTP server that has a, an on-request callback. That's basically all I wanted. Done. Um, then I found out, uh, OK, it would be handy to have some sort of endpoint um, that's basically a struct that um, listens on a, on a route. And uh, you can implement get, put, post, and, and all that stuff. Um, then I thought, oh, damn it. Um, you know, that Flask stuff wasn't too bad after all. It also covered um, authentication and authorization. So I, I put that in. And some convenience endpoint that wraps the whole thing. So you can use an endpoint and just say, use this um, for authorization. Um, of course, we need access to HTTP parameters and cookies. Um, so when, when, I, uh, when I say this is what SAP can do, it's basically what I mean with that is there's SIG wrappers to um, not have to use the C code for that. Um, oh, yeah. And then a very common use case uh, for myself is I have, some, I have this online experiment, and it's online, and then I have an admin interface. But the admin interface needs to be like password protected, and so I have a um, combined kind of endpoint authorization thing that automatically uh, sends you to a login page um, unless you post um, username and password and everything is fine. And from then on, um, the, the admin interface is unlocked. Um, yeah, and I also learned a lot about um, field parent pointer. I use it all the time now. There is a bit more. Uh, we can also do mustache, I don't know how to pronounce it in English. Uh, we can do template rendering. 
we can do WebSockets, which is cool. So soon we'll be able to have multiplayer again. Um, and then there is this, um, this pattern that um, I only know from Go. I don't, I don't write Go code, but I know from friends who do. And they, they do middleware. And so um, for chaining together um, request handlers, I'll have an example later. Um, uh, SAP also has middleware support. Um, we can, that's an introduction that came with the middleware, also pass around um, request context, and it can do error trace responses, which is a feature that um, I sometimes liked with Flask. If an exception is thrown, then you get it in the HTML browser to get it in the client and can see the exact line where stuff went wrong. And um, what comes with facil.io is you can define your number of worker threads and also worker processes. Um, facil can um, monitor all the worker processes and respond then should anything go wrong. And yeah, the, the usual stuff, logging and, and debug info. So this is, I'm not sure if you can read it, this is a typical, like, super simple HTTP request. Uh, sample uh, HTTP server, the most simple server. We have on request. We can check the path and the query, and this is just uh, the init stuff. So this would be an endpoint example. Um, yeah, on GitHub, there's many examples for SAP. So um, I can't show them all now. I, I just thought maybe so you get an indication of how, how, how much code would it be to write something like that. So here we have a little example where you can uh, work with a list of, I don't know, there's an endpoint that has a first name, last name management system. Um, yeah, so this is how basic authentication would work. I have to uh, go through it a bit more quickly because uh, otherwise we might run out of time. Web sockets are there too. So on this side you can see, um, if I, hang on. Yeah, here, here is the web socket stuff. And here is the HTTP stuff. And this is an example um, of a web chat room, complete. Send error. If, if you use send error, so um, my callbacks, they don't allow you to return an error. Um, that is intentional, because you should really think about what's going on in your server. But you can, you can wrap you can wrap uh, with send error, and then you get this beautiful looking error trace um, in black and white, so it really hurts your eyes <laughs> as a punishment for making errors. <laughs> um, for our Go friends, here is an example of how you would do a middleware. Is there any interesting thing to say about that now? Well, it, it's basically a way to say, I've got a handler here, and then I've got a handler there, and I want handler number one to be called, and if that doesn't process the request, pass it on to handler number two, and stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah, this is an awesome thing. Sixception. I discovered a sixception in Zap. So, how does it work? Um, for the middleware, I need a context so that every middleware component can store information in it. And so I created a little function that's totally useless because you can declare structs in SIG with the normal syntax, but I thought I would take it somewhere uh, yeah, a bit further and then revert it back. Anyway, so here we have a context struct that depends on, actually it's explained on the slides. So, we have two, two pieces of middleware, each have their own, um, their own data that needs to be in the context. Um, yeah, okay, and here it goes. We have the combined structure at comp time, and the middleware handler handles chaining, chaining the components, okay, fine, and the handler itself depends on the combined, con combined context, right, great. The context depends on user middleware and the session middleware. And the user middleware depends on the handler. So, handler, and we're going full circle here, it's exception. Wow. Um, and this is amazing. I mean, it really blew me away uh, that this is possible. Seek is so flexible and so awesome. You can just reference seemingly 
everything from anywhere and it all just works, even if it's a circular dependency. Now, some side effects of a SIG project. Well, SIG, with SIG you can produce um, binaries that are statically linked, we've seen that, and so small that you can actually check them into Git and use them in your CI workflows. So I created a Nancy bot for this project, which um, makes releasing releases Releasing releases is very comfortable for me. All I have to do is um, commit a version tag with an annotation that contains like the release notes, and then an announcement bot will come along and uh, post a short announcement on Discord, produce release notes for the GitHub release, and then also update the readme because I'm using the, um, the new SIG package manager, and for that I need uh, the correct URL hash and, and version number to, to be put in. And I just produce the binary for that and use it in the CI workflow, uh, workflow. They used to call him smaller than his logo but actually now he's gotten twice as fat, so it doesn't, it doesn't really work anymore. But um, I, I found it really nice that you can produce it like 100K executable and um, uh, use it in the, in the thing. So, uh, one more thing. How to get to use Zig at work? Well, I think it's really easy. You just create a foundational open source project in Zig, like a framework or a library, then you base your work on that <laughs> new open source project that's so promising and awesome and written in SIG. You contribute to the project and blah, 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 blah. And you share it and encourage others to contribute. And if the project gains traction, you can share the recognition at work and be proud of yourself. If it doesn't, you just keep using it. Ta-da, you can now use SIG for all your future projects. Easy. Um, and the SIG software ecosystem, the community, and all our code base will benefit. At least it worked on my machine. <laughs> yeah, there is actually, I've seen, I've spotted, uh, well, no, it's been, well, I've been contacted, okay? So, but there's, SIG, uh, there's SAP in the wild. Ed, who is in the audience, built what looks to me like a Netflix clone um, with SAP, so go chat to him about it. Yeah, before we go to the live demo, one shameless plug. Ask not what your framework can do for you, ask what you can do for your framework. If you like the project, contribute, please. And now, on with the live demo. Um, if you like, you can take part in an online this uh, software you can love survey now. This is the um, URL. I will try to launch a browser now and throw it on the other display, which didn't really work. Hang on. Oh, there it is. Are you doing it? I cannot see it. Because, okay. Then I can, oh God, now I have to type here. Um, we use the fancy endpoint. Ah, but we need a network for that. Hang on. Okay, we have a network. Got interrupted. Oh, no, there we go. Again. Wow. Okay, let's wait for people to finish.
we should see some increases in the finished section of this whole thing. That would be a good sign. Otherwise, it might look like the server crashed, which would not be a good sign. That's actually the first time SAP got so many concurrent real users and not just a bot. Almost 30 of you are taking it really seriously. Thank you for that. Mm I had known it takes that long, I would have prepared a song because I'm the one with the mic. <laughs> the only problem is I can't sing, but it would have been fun anyway. So, could the remaining 13 please um, not take it so seriously? Thank you. We could do a collective count on like 10, nine, nine. <laughs> eight, eight, <laughs> six. six, yeah, it all works out. Cool. Getting fed. Four. <laughs> mm -hmm. Almost time to think about dinner. <laughs> I mean, of course, I want every vote to be counted. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Somebody's cheating. Didn't you read the cheating notice? OK. I will not take you seriously anymore. We will, we will have a look at some preliminary results now. So um, what can we see here in our scientific um, survey? <laughs> this question, I've asked two statisticians that are smarter than me and they disagreed. <laughs> so we don't know the answer to Loris's question. But what, we, what can we see here? Most people love Zig, which is a good, good thing. Some use Arch. <laughs> we have, wow, 10 or more years. We have very senior um, programmers here. Some do not program, but they might pick it up after this talk. Um, <laughs> SIG experience is, yeah, what, what's kind of expected. We have some, some people who have four to five years. I'm not sure if that's even possible. <laughs> Hang on, let's, let's, let's do the counter check with the core team. 6% core team. And then 12, 13%, 45, I don't believe that. Somebody was lying. Most people do programming in their job, which is good. And as I, as I expected, some will be picking up programming now. <laughs> Everything is awesome. 
Yes. <laughs> the talks are awesome. And the weather is awesome. And basically, right, everybody wants more <laughs> stuff. <laughs> like breaks. Soon. More days, interesting. Yeah, Loris, if you're interested, I can give you the stats afterwards. More workshops? Yeah. Some undecided, some want more? Oh, people want to party. <laughs> <laughs> Only a third of you, the rest? Boring guys. Um, sickle talks, yes. Social events, interesting. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm not really used to like presenting the weather or statistics um, this way, but um, time for collaboration. Yeah, I expect it. Um, we want more of that. And obviously, we want more sick talks. Who? Come on. This is a suspiciously the same like 2.13% again, <laughs> which we can't take seriously. And some didn't finish. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that's <laughs> because these are the preliminary results. So, that's it. I don't have anything more to show. <laughs> we have finished. Awesome. Uh, it's cool to see that we might be getting more web dev in Zig. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, <laughs> I've I like I've had I've had to do it in the past, and I just ended up using like libcurl as a client, and it was fun. Yeah. The static binary part was the the hard part, though. Mm. All right. Uh, any um, questions? Oh, I, I stole your libcurl for. Oh, you did. The um, the ChatGPT command line client for downloading the model if it's not downloaded already. I'm glad someone got use out of that, that wrapper. That's good. I had to fix it, though, but um, uh, I sent yeah. you, I sent no, you a it, PR. It needed, so. it needed fixing. <laughs> hey, questions for Robert? Yeah, one thing, when you ask your question, please speak directly into the microphone. Um, since the last flight, my ears are kind of blocked, so. Alrighty. Um, so. Very cool project. Um, I was about to write something similar, but I think I might look at your project, because I've done projects like this in TypeScript. I've written a WebSocket framework called Theta. Um, would love to pick your brain on a little bit more. I'm curious, does the framework support uh, concurrency? Like, can I hold on to the context and respond later, or do I have to respond right away before the, the next request? Like, if I make a thread and pass it across a, a thread boundary, is that safe, or is that a no-no? So from what I heard, um, I'm trying to answer. Um, the whole, the whole facil.io is evented and uses worker threads. So it dispatches um, requests to the worker threads, and then you get a callback, and um, um, as of recently, uh, the listener can create a context for you, which can be any type, but that would be like a per request context. If you need a global context, just use a global variable. Did that answer your question? Uh, not exactly, but I guess I can uh, I'll always pick your brain later. But uh, great talk, thanks. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Of course, it's always you. It's always him. <laughs> is there a talk where you don't have a question? This is not a question. This is a thank you for rendering the glyphs so beautifully. This is great. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? I think that's, that's it. Thank you very much. That was an awesome talk. Thank you. OK, so I'm here with Rene, who's going to speak next. Ne last talk of the first day. Uh, Rene, uh, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Austria. From Austria, so all the way to Vancouver, and Matt put you in the last speaker slot. How thankful are you about that? Oh, I'm very thankful to Matt, and I'll pay him back um, uh, in his workshop. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. That's it.